Welcome along to IVHQ's latest webinar. It is everything you wanted to know about volunteering in Africa. My name is Jordan from IVHQ and today, uh, great to have Jamie along with us as well. Hi guys. Jamie, tell us about what you do here at IVHQ. Well, I'm our Head of Africa Programs and also Head of Europe Programs. So I oversee our team of program managers who are helping our volunteers prepare for their trips in Africa and Europe. So obviously, since today's webinar is all about Africa, Jamie's obviously the perfect person to, uh, to have a chat about, um, about preparing for your trip. Like I say, the webinar is designed for all of you that are thinking about volunteering abroad in Africa in the future. Maybe you're looking for more information, maybe you're registered, ready to go, and you're just, uh, you know, want to get a bit more info as well. This is going to be absolutely perfect for you. All the questions that we've built this webinar off are based on pretty much questions that you guys get day to day. Is that, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So these are the everyday questions that our program managers are fielding from volunteers who are wanting to know what to expect on the ground, what they have to do to prepare before they go, and also just that general feel of what it's like to be there in country. So hopefully we can help you out. Now, if you're watching us live today, um, thank you so much for joining us. Now, if you did want to ask a question, we've got a team live answering questions as we speak. So make sure you just uh, ask your question in the chat window below, and one of our team will get back in touch with you uh, as soon as possible. Otherwise, if you're watching the uh, the recorded version of this video uh, then you can just comment with your question underneath the YouTube video and uh, one of our team again will uh, get in touch and let you know uh, you know the answers to your questions that you've got now a bit of an introduction um, IVHQ we have 11 volunteer programs across Africa so South Africa Zambia Victoria Falls Madagascar Kenya Tanzania Uganda Morocco Ghana you got I think them. I've got them all. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's a varied amount of volunteer projects that we have in all of those places as well, uh, from childcare to teaching. Plus, for example, in South Africa, you can even go on a surf education program. Uh, and uh, wildlife in Victoria Falls, which is obviously really popular as well. So really varied projects that we do have in, uh, in Africa. What we do recommend first and foremost to do though is to kind of match the skills that you've got and the interests that you've got to a decent uh, volunteer program, which is obviously what we're gonna talk about here today. There is a lot to think about when planning a trip to, to Africa and volunteering in Africa. So we're gonna start uh, today's webinar with some of the most commonly asked questions in regards to preparing for your trip. So firstly, the big one, vaccinations. What's required in terms of vaccinations? Well, that does change depending on what country you want to volunteer in, in Africa. And also, personally, as an individual, we can all take different vaccinations. So the first thing we recommend is talk to your local travel doctor. They're going to know you and the country best for where you want to go. There are certain legal requirements. So Ghana, for example, you won't be able to get your visa if you haven't had the yellow fever vaccination. There's also different vaccinations depending on your travel path. If you're entering any countries before you volunteer with us, that might have an impact on what you need. So definitely talk to your travel doctor and they'll let you know what's best for you and your entire travel plans. And the other one uh, that's a big question is malaria. Mm. Um, it, should we be taking you know, malaria tablets when we're traveling in Africa? Yeah, so if you do need anti-malarials, we'll let you know in your information packet when you register. There are certain countries where it's not actually needed for where our program is based. South Africa is a great example of that. If you're in Cape Town, malaria is just not an issue there. But if you're traveling into the rural areas or going on a safari in the Kruger National Park, then you might need malaria. So again, it's going to depend on your overall travel plans. But we'll let you know if it's a vaccination that we recommend, and then you can chat to your doctor about that as well, because there's different types of anti-malarials as well. And the other question we get a lot is around visas. Now, this is such a broad, broad topic, but is there any advice you can give about visas in, in Africa? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, are there visas on arrival? Like, how do you apply? That type of thing. Absolutely. So most of our programs in Africa, you can get a visa on arrival for most nationalities. If you can't get a visa on arrival, then we recommend you just visit your nearest embassy for that country, and they'll let you know the process for you. We do let you know what the process is in your information booklet as well. So as an example, if you're an American or Canadian volunteer, you can get a visa on arrival in Tanzania, and you pay $100 at the airport for that. In South Africa, you don't need a visa to enter the country for less than three months, you get a tourist stamp on arrival. And the only one where no volunteer can get a visa on arrival is Ghana. All volunteers have to get their visa beforehand before they arrive. Sounds good. Now, the other question when you're planning for your trip is, is money, cash. Mm. Like, um, 
Is it, is it safe to take a big wad of, of US dollars or should we be taking a credit card or how does it work? Well, I don't think it matters where you're going in the world. We never suggest that you carry a lot of money on your person. So what we recommend is you take a bit to start off with. So that's just going to get you through the visa process when you arrive, if you are getting it on arrival, and a bit of cash to begin your stay. Then we recommend that you withdraw the money from ATMs as needed while you're there. Something to consider is if you are going to Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe is actually having a bit of a money issue at the moment. So for volunteers going to Victoria Falls, we do actually recommend taking that cash with them. But again, we highlight that information. If it is different for a different country, we let you know in our information. Awesome. And packing. Packing in general. Uh, when you think about packing for Africa, what's the, like, the typical things that you need to have on that packing list? <laughs> Oh gosh, there's so many things to consider. I think suitable clothes for volunteering. So certain countries have different cultural norms and expectations. So you want to make sure that you've got some conservative clothing. So bottoms below the knee, you know, shirts that are going to cover your chest and shoulders. That's always great. But then um, if you're in a location like Cape Town, you're definitely going to want to go out in your free time as well. So pack some clothes for social events on the weekend. I think you want to look at things like cameras to take memories you know so make sure you um, take your electronics so you can keep in touch with your family at home you might think it's not safe to take your electronics but it definitely is as long as you use um, you know common sense when you're out and about uh, with those so what's the what's the best way you, you mentioned before about uh, phones and, and laptops what is the best way to keep in touch with family and, and connect yeah, so we'd usually recommend that you purchase a local sim card in country so you can purchase one quite Cheaply. <laughs> God. You can purchase one quite affordably in country and then you can put that into your phone provided it's unlocked. So before you travel you want to check with your network provider to make sure that it's unlocked and that it can take an international SIM. Then you purchase the SIM card and that's a great way to message friends and family and also keep in touch with the volunteers in country and our local team on the ground as well. Outside of that, we'd recommend um, internet, of course. So some locations do have internet in the volunteer accommodation. Otherwise, it's accessible in internet cafes in town. Um, the distances can vary depending on the country. So you might have to commute 30 minutes into town to access an internet cafe. But for the most part, it's accessible a few times a week throughout your stay. Sounds good. So at this stage, you know, we're packed, uh, got the vaccinations, the visas ready, you got some cash ready to go. So we're, um, you know, re ready to get, head off to the airport so you can buy us to family and friends. One of the big concerns that, uh, that family and friends will have is, is it even safe to volunteer in Africa? Like <laughs> what, what you're about to go do, is it, is it even safe? Absolutely. So with any international travel, there's always going to be an element of risk. But we have local teams on the ground that make sure you're well introduced to the country and the program. They'll cover the do's and don'ts for while you're in country. But the biggest thing you can tell your friends and family is that you're going to be well supported. And as long as you're adhering to the advice of our local team, then you shouldn't have an issue while you're there at all. A lot of what we recommend is just to utilise common sense. So don't flash expensive jewellery or expensive electronics when you're out and about. Keep those in your bag or your backpack. And if you're ever in doubt, just have a chat to our local team about areas you want to go to or things you want to do in your free time. They're the locals. They have the best knowledge of the area, so they'll make sure that you're well informed. Okay, and so obviously when the volunteers arrive in the country, uh, at the airport, there's someone to pick them up, I'm guessing? Absolutely. So our local team will be there at the airport when you arrive. They typically have a sign with IVHQ and your name on it, so they're easier to spot. And um, they'll then take you through to the program accommodation and introduce you to the other volunteers and where you'll be staying for your time on the program. And in our volunteer programs around Africa, how many volunteers typically are you going to be joined with, you know? Oh, well, that does vary. Some programs are larger than others. So at the moment, for example, we have 20 volunteers in Uganda. We have about 30 in progress in South Africa. So big programs there. If you head over to Morocco, it tends to be a little bit of a smaller program. So you might have five to 10 volunteers there at one time. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the accommodation. Obviously, it's quite varied. Like you say, <laughs> we've got programs in Morocco, but yeah. then also in Ghana and, and Kenya. So... Yeah, t tell us about what we're going to expect with the accommodation. The great thing about our programs in Africa is a lot of them offer options for accommodation. So in Tanzania, there's volunteer houses and homestays. So if you actually have a preference for one of those, 
then you can let us know and we always do our best to help honor those preferences. So the homestays like in Kenya and some in Ghana, they offer quite a cultural experience where you get to immerse yourself in a family and the home and their way of life, which is a really neat way to experience a country. The volunteer houses, which we offer throughout a lot of our Africa programs, they're quite a social environment for volunteers to stay in a group setting and have a lot of fellow volunteers of similar ages and diverse backgrounds to hang out with. So both offer a really great experience, just a little bit different. How about meals? What can we expect with, uh, with food, African food? African food. Well, um, <laughs> geographically, that's going to change. So if you're going to East Africa, you're going to have ugali and quite carb-heavy meals. If you, <laughs> if you head over to Ghana, um, surprisingly enough, West African food is, food is very spicy. So um, you might not be aware of that, but um, there's quite um, a lot of spicy soups, a lot of peanuts and great flavours. If you're heading into South Africa and Cape Town, it's actually um, quite a developed city, Cape Town. So the food is a lot more Western and not typically African, as um, Jordan just said. So diverse depending on where you go, but very tasty no matter what. Now obviously you're going to be travelling to Africa, but at the same time you are also going to be volunteering in Africa at the same time. So we better touch on the volunteer projects that mm. are available as well uh, around the, uh, the continent. Firstly, there are so many different placements and projects available. Can you tell us the specific placement of where I'm going to be heading once I, once I apply? Unfortunately not. So our local teams are going to place you where you're most needed at the time. And what comes into that as well is whether there's availability as our placements as well. So about two weeks before you arrive, our local team are going to look into the placements that are available, which of those placements need the volunteers that are coming in, the different volunteer skills and where they're going to be best utilised. So there's so many things to consider when actually placing a volunteer in their specific work placement. So we can't share those details before you get there, but once you arrive, our local team will take you through your orientation, share all those specific details with you and make sure you're well introduced to your placement as well. Now, a little side question. We get mm. this question a lot on Facebook and social media is, what do the colours mean <laughs> in the Ghana program? Yeah. So Ghana does group their placements into colours. So you can think of the colour essentially as an umbrella. Within each umbrella, you'll have a variety of different projects. So the purple project, for example, sorry, the purple program, should I say, is a combination of teaching, medical work, agriculture, sports education. But if you move along to the pink project, we only offer childcare there. If you move along to gold, there's construction, there's teaching, there's childcare. So it essentially acts as an umbrella for all the variety of projects that are offered underneath it. And how about, how do we actually go about selecting partners around Africa and, and all the placements? What's the process involved with that? Yeah, so when we decide we want to open up in a new country, we do a lot of research into the local organisations that are operating on the ground and also organisations that have contacted us in the past to ask if we can send volunteers. Once we've had communication with them and narrowed down a few that we think could potentially work for IVHQ and match the sort of placements that we like to offer our volunteers and the services that we need on the ground, then we send a team over from our program development team who will meet with those partners, check in on the placements, check in on all, I guess, the infrastructure that the program has and make sure that it's suitable. Back to actually volunteering on the placements, how do you get to the placement each day? Is, uh, you know, d different transport options available? Yeah, so typically that's going to be public transport. This does change again with each country. Each country setup is quite different. So in Ghana, the placements are actually usually within walking distance of the accommodation. In other locations such as Kenya and Tanzania, you'll be looking at a public transport commute. So our local team will ensure that you're briefed on the public transport options that are available, make sure that you know how to use them, where to catch them from, where to get off, how much you should be paying for the trips, all of that information is shared with you before you get there. But usually we'd recommend you're budgeting around $5 a day for the use of public transport. Sounds good. Now, also another big thing about volunteering uh, abroad is is that you get to travel and immerse yourself in the culture. So that's a big part of, uh, of, of heading off to Africa. So one of the big questions, obviously, you would get, I'm guessing, about visiting Africa is safari. Mm. Is uh, in the weekends, you know, can you go on safari? And when is the best time to go on <laughs> safari? Make sure if you're wanting to do a big five safari that you're actually really carefully choosing the program wisely. So 
the countries which offer those big five safaris, you're typically going to find them in East Africa or Southern Africa. If you're heading over to Ghana, you're not really going to get a big five safari, but you'll still have some awesome activities to do in your free time. But, you know, I think November's a great time of year for the big five safari. That's um, the wildebeest run, so you can have a look at the wildebeest doing their crossing. That's always an exciting time to be there. Um, in Uganda, you can do a gorilla safari. Um, one piece of advice I've had from previous volunteers is not to let that, the price of that deter you. So many volunteers have ticked that off their bucket list and are so glad that they did. So the price tag's a little expensive for the gorillas, but they say it's a once in a lifetime thing to do. Sounds good. And um, should we be booking these type of tours in advance or waiting till we get to you know meet other volunteers and, and everything like that? What's the best way to go about that? We absolutely recommend doing it once you're there. Not only because you'll meet other volunteers that you can travel with in your free time, but also the more people that are on a safari typically lowers the cost. So if you get a group of five volunteers together, that's typically going to be a cheaper cost for you than if you're just going by yourself. Also, our local team can often make great recommendations for you on tour providers to use. There can be discounts depending on the program that you're choosing as well. So we recommend wait till you're there. Actually plan out your trip with other volunteers depending on what they're doing in their free time because you'll find a lot of what they want to do is actually what you want to do as well. And how about the other, um, obviously safari is a big thing uh, in Africa, but there are other things to do as well? Oh, so many things to do. So um, it makes me smile just thinking about Africa. <laughs> so um, again... Uganda is one I started on before, so there's the gorillas, there's whitewater rafting on the Nile, there's rainforests in Uganda, there, if you're heading a bit further south to Zambia and also Victoria Falls, the name in itself, Victoria Falls, so an amazing site, river cruises, in Ghana there's beautiful beaches, there's the Cape Coast Castle, um, South Africa, endless in Cape Town, there's Robben Island, which is, you know, a great um, historical site there with Nelson Mandela. There's also a range of wildlife activities in the Cape Town area as well. There's the Garden Route, which you can spend a week traveling. So many things to do. Awesome. And nice and easy to get around uh, to these um, hot spots, you know, from the volunteer accommodation. Absolutely. So most of them are very accessible from where our programs are based. If they require a bit more travel, then our local team can make recommendations for that. But there's great public transport. There can be cheap domestic flights. So if you're in Tanzania, for example, we're based in Arusha, but you can do a weekend trip to Zanzibar, which is really cool. So A good way for inspiration as well for uh, trips around Africa is just jump on your phone, onto yeah. Instagram, just search for the, uh, the hashtag IVHQ weekends and you'll just be, uh, you know, find heaps of inspiration and things to do there as well. Absolutely. So obviously uh, we've covered a lot on uh, on volunteering in Africa. A lot of people um, are going to want to hear it from, from others as well. So where's the best place for us to be able to find reviews online about, um, about IVHQ's programs in Africa? Yeah, so we've got some great reviews on sites like Go Overseas. That's mm -hmm. a really great uh, review site where you can read some independent reviews on what volunteers have to see say our social media channels are fantastic that's first-hand networking with volunteers that have been there done that volunteers on the program at the time so um, a, what we recommend is if you go into the group and you post a question other volunteers will jump on there and comment and share their experiences so definitely interact on there well thanks so much Jamie for uh, for joining us here today and thank you all for joining us on today's webinar we do hope that you found it really useful uh, we hope it's given you more information about volunteering in Africa uh, if you hadn't registered for example and uh, hopefully this has made you think maybe this is the program for me we really hope that uh, that is the case as there is a question that we haven't quite answered today uh, what you can do if you are registered on one of our programs you can just get in touch with your program manager and they will obviously be able to answer any questions that you've got Otherwise, if you head along to our website, on the home page, you'll see a little question mark down in the bottom right hand corner of the website. Now, if you click that button, type in your question and just like that, one of the team will get back in touch to, uh, to answer any question that you do have about volunteering in Africa and volunteering abroad anywhere with IVHQ. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you do have any more comments or anything like that or, or a topic that you'd like us to run a future webinar topic, uh, please just let us know in the comment section below. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next webinar. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye, guys.